Do you swear on stage? No. Really? No. Wow. I mean, yes. I mean, I do not swear on stage. It's hard when you say the double negative. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. No, I don't swear on stage. No. Ever. No. Wow. Well, okay. Let me pull that back a hint. Sometimes if I'm like out, just you know, having a good old time, like I'm, you know, I might. Yeah. But like I, riffing. but like it's not. If I'm riffing, sure. But it's not in any of my written material. I, I once turned down a clean show because I wasn't confident in my ability to not swear. Interesting. Also, I talk. I I used to do a bit about like peeing sitting down and like blah blah blah. You know that would still be clean, right? Peeing I didn't know. Down. I didn't know the way they introduced the show to me. The way they I I I reached out and I was like, I'd love to do the show, and then and then they were like, it's a clean show. Uh, I think for families, and I was like, I don't know, you know, if that's where does the line end, begin and end. I, so I, I said no. I was like, I don't really want to put myself in an uncomfortable situation. I imagine there's like a, like a nine year old in the crowd that goes. He talked about peeing sitting down. <laughs> I'm leaving. Well, they, you know, yeah, in retrospect, I probably should have just done the show, but I don't know. They had it, it was kind of like it, 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 it was intense the way that they spoke about it. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know if I'm intense about anything. I have to think about it. I'm intense about Annette Benning. We spoke about her earlier. Oh, yes. And I'm intense about Allison Janney. Yeah. Yeah. Very intense about it. And but, I'm still intense about Charles Melton. I'm not intense about that. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it was a fine performance. I thought May, December, I really appreciated what they were going for. It wasn't for me. My favorite part of the movie was not your favorite part of the movie. What was your favorite part of the movie? Uh, The the Natalie Portman monologue. When she is to the camera, like, doing, she's doing the monologue as the actress. Yeah, yeah. That, which is, like, so meta. But I didn't love May, December. And which is not to say that it's bad. I didn't love Made I didn't love. I liked it a lot. I didn't love it, but I loved Charles Melton's performance in it. Yeah, I didn't really love that either. Wow. We we can continue this conversation. I realize we haven't introduced the tea yet. Oh yeah, sure. For those who are well, that's uh, the tea, really. Yeah, that is the tea. For those steeping at home with us, by the way, this is wonderful. This is a Yamashiro Tarori green sencha we really tea. have begun <laughs> yes this is exciting um for those steeping at home uh 175 for three minutes it's typical green tea oh, yeah. steeping do you have all uh, oh, we're doing okay oh, do you want to do a cheers is that what you're going for yeah nice. i love that cheers to you you too i worked at a t-bana wait how have you not brought that up you know how i feel about tea you worked at a tea bar a Tivana is not a tea. Bar. Oh, Tivana, a tea bana. yeah I worked there's something wrong with tivana i i don't it was fine i worked oh, you didn't like six it. months what'd you was... do there I stood outside and gave samples. Here's my challenge with that. Yeah. So I, 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 I young. Have you ever cater waited? No. Okay. So I have. My biggest challenge with cater waitering was that I, and I'm sure everyone's gonna know where this is going. I was a nibbler, and um, uh-huh. so if you're passing things out before I would hit the door, sample the goods. And uh, wow, really? Oh, for sure. Not like sample. I would eat like you know. It's it's a past hors d'oeuvres. It's not like I'm like eating like, other people's food. You did the thing where you like walked around at an event with a tray of correct. Food. Wow. Now before I go out, let's say for example, I was handing out little crab rangoons, right? Yeah. Your boy's got to have a couple of rangoons before he hits the floor. So I would like take one or two, and then I have another tray. I'm like, oh, I didn't get to try the ahi tuna. Let me, oop, you know. Yeah. And then I just and and at, at a certain point, it's like, how much food am I consuming? And how bad of a sampler person am I that my sole focus is to either eat all the food myself yeah. or get it out, like get it out the door. Like I knew what, what people would eat a ton and I would go directly to them. Can I be honest with you? Please. I think that that is maybe the worst suited job for you. For me? Because you like to talk and relate to people. I do. I love it. And that's it. not the job for that. I do love it so yeah, much. Yeah. Could, there couldn't have been... Because you'd be ha- holding that plate and then you'd Can't be like, anything. what's your story? <laughs> yeah. And you, and you got to be moving the product. Yeah. I, when hey, you're... I was noticing as you were talking to that person, you seem to have melancholy in your eyes. Yeah. What, what is it that you're feeling in this yeah. moment? I don't mean an insulting way, no, but I yeah, don't feel, yeah, not I, suited for that. I think it's 100% accurate. I'm Speaking of that, and, and we could talk about 50,000 other things I'm trying to remember how we met now that I'm thinking about the fact that I like to relate to people did someone facilitate an <clears throat> intro here no I don't know how we met actually probably they had a comedy show no I have no doubt but like and I we so- probably just were like just nice energies yeah that's like how I met Neil I love Neil yeah Neil fat former former guest of the pod he's been on the podcast yeah fun his uh, he had a hot take about Godzilla movies I mean it was just a real interesting Neil's got stuff. great takes Neil I, I call him great take gauche do you really? I don't, but I should. Okay. I don't want to lie to you. I have a plant in my house called that the I, ghost tree. No, it's I. I bought it when Neil moved to New York. We went to a plant store together. Love it. And like his like last week in L.A. 
and I bought a plant and I named it Young Neil based off of Scott Pilgrim, but also Neil. So it's Young N-E-E-L. And that plant has beaten the odds. Is it's that because you have alive. a brown thumb versus a green one? No, I love plants. I have lots of plants, but this was like an early in my plant story. Mm. And uh, it, it, it even to this day looks relatively sickly, but persists. I think that Neil should come up with a short film where instead of a ghost story, it's a ghost story. <laughs> and it's like a little horror movie that Neil makes. Like a Guillermo del Toro thing? Sure. I could have like a sampler. Yeah, but then you would need like all these little creature features in your Guillermo movies. You could do it. Neil could do it. I love Neil. Have you seen his band? He's got like a... I've heard his music. He, he sent could... me his music, his thesis for his masters. Yeah. he did. I Neil could do a creature feature musical thing. I'm, I'm a big... Uh, it, listen, if I'll there be the are, creature. If there's a million Neil Gosh fans in the world, I'm one of them. Yeah. If there's one in the world, it's me. If there are none, I'm dead. Oh, oh. Yeah. Can I tell you the if there's many I'm one if there's one it's me I I think you said that to me once about something else and it w- stuck with me really yeah but um no I don't remember how we met but oh yeah I, that's I, it I but I would go back to the fact that I just like remember being friends with you yeah and then what what is interesting about you is that I think that you have a greater um I think I'm very driven I consider myself a very driven individual a <laughs> passionate driven individual and every time I'm like man I'm hustling and then you'll tell me some story where you'll be like yeah and then I like you know, ended up, uh, they were like, yeah, like this person, um, might be like really helpful in your journey. All you need to do is like, you know, paint a fence for 10 hours and, you know, scale a building. And then you'll be telling me the story. You'll be like, so I, it's after I'd scaled the building, I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? And then I'll be like, what did I do yesterday? Well, I wrote an email. Well, so, I mean, I've only scaled a building one time. Yeah. Okay. One time, so, one time. Yeah. yeah you're Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's your favorite superhero, but, um, it's not, but I like Spider-Man. I like Spider-Man. I don't know why. I, I, I thought you about just saying just now, yes yeah. for the sake of conversation. Don't lie. I like Spider-Man, but it's not my fave. I would say Spider-Man and Batman are my people. Green Lantern. It's Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. The ring does the thing. I have a ring. Do I you? Have, I have a silver Green Lantern ring. With does my it birthstone. work? It does not. I didn't think so. Yeah. I think I liked um, Batman so much because he really had no discernible skills. And that He's is... just wealthy. Yeah. He's smart. Batman's super smart. People S- don't really talk about him wealthy. Enough. Yeah. But I think like... That's why I liked him so much. A lot of people are like, oh, I love Superman. I'm like, oh, you love the person who has everything? Yeah. Oh, good for you. It must be really hard to love someone who literally has everything. Except for, you know, his parents. <laughs> That's true. That's his thing. Listen, <laughs> listen, as someone who doesn't have his own father, I don't feel like I, you know, I'm not coming out and leading with that. Sure. I'm not like, hey, by the way, guys, I'm going to be a comic tonight. I'm Josh. Lost my dad. Feel for me. <laughs> well, Batman doesn't say like. I feel like every time. My he's, mom and dad. Yeah, he's like, my mom and dad died. <laughs> You know, he's like the Joker killed them in were, s- in some areas, and then in other versions of the story, it wasn't the Joker. You yeah, know? yeah. I don't understand it. He's to a me, session away. Yeah, like he, the history always changes. It's not like sometimes I'm like, oh, my dad died by a car accident. It's always pancreatic cancer over here. So I'm always just like, yeah, it's the same one. But what's weird is pancreatic cancer dressed as the Joker, and I thought that was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Too too much? No, no. Just right? Your story to tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, here's all. Here's what I will say. I I, I think, and then, <laughs> hope I'm right. I don't think you've lost a parent, yeah? No, I haven't. I hope, what, 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 what fun fodder once you do? Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> too, <laughs> too dark? No, no. You know, I, you, if you don't laugh, you cry. We all die. What? Yeah. That's why t- we were talking about estate sales before this. Oh, yes, we were. So I, I have a very healthy relationship with death. Are you not scared of it? I think I'm scared of it, but yeah. I also think that everybody does it. Mm. So there's no point in like, I mean, granted, I'm, you know, relatively young. So maybe my tune will change the closer I get to it. If I'm lucky enough to get close enough to talk about and think about mortality at that level. But I also think that it's a, it's an inevitability. So it's, and everybody's done it. Everybody, the, the best and worst people that have ever existed have all died. And so... Yeah, but then I don't want to be like a sheep, you know? I don't want to do what everyone else is doing. <laughs> yeah, but you have to. True. It's not even a choice. Like, that's the thing. It's like, it's not, you're not a sheep in that situation because a sheep is, there's a, a degree of choice to it. Like, everybody mm. dies. You know, I read something, and, and, and I am loath to reference Reddit, but I did read something on Reddit years ago, and it has stuck with me ever since. And the thread was... um, have you ever experienced someone who wasn't afraid of death on their deathbed? Ooh. Why? And, you know, what did they say? I'd love why? to read that. So this guy 
talked about his grandfather and his grandfather was dying and he went to visit his grandfather in the hospital and he had a really close relationship with his grandfather and was incredibly emotional. Yeah. And his grandfather said, you don't need to be sad. Like I am not scared to go. And he, he said, I don't understand how you can't be scared. And his grandfather said, do you remember when I used to take you to the amusement park? And he goes, yeah. And he said, and before we would go, you'd be so excited and you would say, I want to play all the games. I want to eat all the food. I want to ride all the rides. And you were adamant that you were going to do all those things. And listen, we would, we would do it. I mean, I would take you, we would do everything. Yeah. And by the end of the day, I would say, do you want to keep going? And it had been hours. You'd be like, no, I'm tired. Like, I, 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 I played all the games. I rode all the rides. I ate all the food. I want to go home. He was, yeah. he was like, I've done that. Yeah. I've played the games. I've ridden the rides. I've eaten the food. I'm, that's, I'm ready to go home. That's, that's exactly what I think. It's like, am I scared of death now? Of course. Yeah, I, I am. There's unfinished business. There's things I want to live. I want to do. Yeah. I, I'm terrified of, you know, planes. I'm terrified of like, I, I am, I'm very scared and anxious and nervous all the time. Like okay. I don't want to get it. Twisted. Shocking I'm not you're like not a, Jewish. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I hear that constantly. But uh, yeah, I think the idea of like getting to that stage of mm-hmm. life. Yeah. I mean, again, maybe that'll change. It is like a deep unknown, but yeah. I think that there's, I don't know. There, I, 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 I love Halloween. I love spooky things. I, I know like, you love Halloween. I remember that about yeah, you. I love estate sales. And I think that it's like, I don't know, just the idea. I think, I think going to estate sales more has made me more comfortable too with the idea of death. <laughs> estate, sales, estate sales make me nervous. Um, Tell me why. Um, I feel like the person who died didn't necessarily give me permission to take their things. Yeah, I get that. I, I get. I get sometimes. That's yeah. I, I understand that thought. I think that I look at it in a terms of reusable and like renewable things. Mm-hmm. And like I, mm-hmm. I go for specific things. I like watches. I like espresso cups. I like vinyls. Um, and like sometimes like little kitchen things. Um, but I always look at it as like their story isn't done just because the mm. person was holding on to them. Doesn't mean that they need to go into a landfill now or like I, I, I and I think I've done this since I was a little kid. I get like very emotional about, uh, inanimate objects like i attach emotional value to them Mm -hmm. and so sometimes i'll look at like it's very hard for me to like throw things away sometimes because i'm like that thing has been with me for so long sure and uh so i look at some of these like watches or like a chair or something and i'm like well yeah your story still needs to be told you're not done that person is done but you have a longer lifespan so i have two responses to that my first one is if you have not read there's a play called uh lonely planet Okay. And is one of my favorite plays in the entire world. And I, I, anytime I have to do a monologue from a play, I always choose it from there. I love that. It is about two oh, yeah. uh, men in the uh, late 80s, early 90s during the AIDS crisis. And one of them has a map shop. And uh, the other one keeps bringing chairs to the shop. Hmm. Different weird chairs to the shop. And in like the climax of the play, you know, what really is established is that every time one of their friends dies of AIDS... This this friend who keeps bringing the chairs refuses to let them let their stuff just be cleared out by the government and yeah. like taken away. And so he takes a, a chair from every one of their friends' apartments that passed and brings them to the shop because that's his way of trying to hold on to them. I love that. It's truly one of my favorite plays I, in the entire world. I, I will read it. Um, I, I yeah. I think that th- that's exactly what it is. It's like. I, and I sometimes I wonder, I'm like, I bring these items home and I'm like, I wonder if there's like a little spirit attached to it. And I like walk around. That's why I'm scared. I walk around my apartment and I just say like, I, I've done this. I've been like, you're totally welcome here. Like mm. I have no ill will against you. Mm. All good. Mm. Uh, if there is a supernatural thing, like mm. that's totally fine. Because I think it's like if they were once part of this like physical i sound so woo woo right now but like i really i but we're in la i mean but it's i just think it's like i don't know i like the paranormal and i like ghosts and i and i think that all that stuff is super interesting and Mm. and there's too much of it just to simply be ignored i think so Uh, you do believe in ghosts yeah to a degree i think i think i do okay i'm not like i'm not one of those although i love people that don't believe because i feel like that's more likely like i go on ghost tours i like haunted things like i i just think that that's you know there's still if if that is real there's still a degree of humanity i hope and like i would rather not it's probably really scary to be a ghost and there's probably a lot of existential questions that you're dealing with so you're probably not in the best mood you know there i think there's a degree of empathy so it's like if i I have their stuff i'm like 
hey, you're fine here. You're welcome. But also, like, I don't want, yeah, I don't want your things to be just thrown. It's like I, vintage stores. That's the same thing. This is a vintage jacket. This was this this had a whole life. It looks I, very clean to be a vintage mm-hmm. jacket. It is. The only other point I was going to make is that I remember right after my dad died, let's get back to that again. Sure. Right after my dad died, um, I had a suitcase of his, like a carry-on, and I'd used it for a while, like even before he died. I was using the suitcase because yeah. he wasn't using it. And um, I'm not exaggerating, maybe a month after he passed, the zipper broke, and it like broke bad. And I uh, brought it to a suitcase place, and I was like, can you fix this? And he looks at it, and he goes, no. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, his zipper is too far gone. You're going to have to replace the entire zipper. And if you do that, I'm not I'm not exaggerating when I tell you, it's going to be more expensive than this piece of luggage. I would not recommend it. If you're thinking in car terms, this is totaled. And so I was like, well, let me think about it. So I went home and I called my mom and I'm like, I think I'm just going to pay. I'm going to pay. I'm going to get it fixed. And my mother said something to me that I will never, ever forget. And I apply it to many things. She said, honey, your father was not a suitcase. Your father's soul is not in that suitcase. Mm-hmm. Your your love for your father is not in that suitcase. Yeah. If you hold on to it or you let it go, it has nothing to do with your father. So yes, it was his, then it was yours. Get rid of the suitcase. That doesn't mean you're getting rid of your father. It means you're getting Aww. rid of the suitcase. What a lovely mom. I, well, she has some Hall of Fame moments and some other ones that are not as coach, but like... Yeah, her serial know. killer opinions are a little rough, but... Ooh, yeah. <laughs> um, but that's a really lovely thing. But that's what I mean when, when, you know, when you were talking about how sometimes it's hard for you to throw things away. Yeah. Like, that was a really big game changer for me, where it's just like, you are not the things you have. Totally. No, yeah. totally. Totally. And uh, I want you to know that your wife told me to tell you all this. Yeah. She's today. like, you got to get that shit out of the house. Yeah. This is an intervention. Yeah. Um, there's which, some, I mean, there's some I've been to that are really Interventions sad. or Inter- estate yeah. sales? Yeah. I mean, no, the interventions are generally pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would kill at an intervention. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, yeah. Yeah. I'd you be, know, for some reason, when I drove up here today, I yeah. did have like the passing thought of like, what if this is an intervention? Not that I need an intervention. About but what? I, I don't know. I okay. literally, for some reason, I don't know why. Maybe it's because like, there's a gate entrance into your home. Yeah, and there it's is. kind of like a nice, but I, for some reason, makes I was it like, seem nicer than what it is. Yeah. Being intervened. Again, I don't have a problem, but I was just curious. I had the passing thought. Okay. Out of curiosity, if if this were to be an intervention, thinking about all your habits, nothing like crazy. Yeah. Like any very silly things. I don't text be, back. Is that what you're asking? Oh, but that would be the thing? Yeah. We'd have an intervention about that you don't text back? I saw somebody on a TikTok. They did have a jokey intervention for their friend about this. About not texting back? Yeah. You know what's the worst part? I don't text back. And when people don't text me back, I get really upset. Isn't but, that terrible? But you won't text back. Yeah. Or you're saying when you don't text back and then they text again... No, 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 no. Like, I don't, I'm a really bad text backer. I'm I just, trying to think if you've ever left me on red. Probably. I probably have. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's Oh, not, you have. Yeah, 100% have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's t- nobody's fault. But when people don't text me back, I'm like, they hate me. Mm. Ugh, I'm the worst. What did I do? And I'm like racking through my brain of like, how did I offend them? Everybody hates me. All of this stuff. Yeah. And yeah, that's like, it's truly the worst. But also, well, this is a whole other thing. We'll talk about it later. I want the thing. Well, I think there's a degree. I saw something online about being like addicted to shame. Oh, and that's so interesting. I was like, I yeah, I was like, I wonder if there's like a degree of that. Do I have like an addiction to shame? A shame addiction. Yeah. You yeah. seen the movie Shame? Yes. <sighs> it's so sad. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so funny. I think I I'm I think I'm addicted to anxiety. I get that. Yeah, I'm not addicted to shame. I'm addicted I, to anxiety. I also think I have a little bit. I like a little bit of a hit of anxiety. And yeah. By hit, I mean. Full blown. A hundred percent. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there were an intervention for me, what would it be about? I mean, Jess has already intervened about how much tea I have in this house. That that has been an intervention. But you've monetized it. Uh, Yeah. But I mean, like, even so, I wonder what my, yeah, my intervention might be. It might be texting also. Yeah? Yeah. You have left me on red too. Yeah. And that, well, that was purposeful, but I, a <laughs> lot of other people, um, no, I, 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 here's the thing. I view my life. Have you ever worked in a restaurant? No. <sighs> Okay, so you're better than me. Um, no, no, it's fine. Look Listen, at the house you live in. It's nicer I, than mine. I, I, I don't know. But I liked your place. I well, the new, it's fine. But you have a wonderful poster in there. We moved. Oh, yeah. Oh, and this is still nicer. <laughs> did you did you get rid of the poster? No, I have it. Oh, but it's a baby. For those that are listening, I so so okay. It's tough to display. Yeah, this is a little tough. This is a little tough. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, this is tough. This okay. is pre for the record. This is pre. So so. I we had a conversation once about how you loved uh, an illustrator named Mondo, I believe. Uh, no, it's a company. Company, yeah. 
and they make movie posters. Yeah. You told me this once. I squirreled hold it in my head. One of the nicest gifts I've ever received. Oh, thank you. And um, I I remembered it. And your birthday was coming up, and I really wanted to get you something that you would appreciate. Yeah. And so I got. And I know that you and I share a love for Edgar Wright. Mm -hmm. So I got you uh, a baby draw. This was years ago. This was like six or seven years ago. Yeah. I got you a baby driver poster, which I I loved. I think you loved it. I hope you loved it. And and then, because we've been friends since, (laughs) like we would talk every time another piece of news would come out where it was like, Kevin Spacey did horrible things. And you're like, oh, okay. And then you're like, okay. And then, oh my God, what's the other guy's name who did horrible shit? Ansel Elgort. Yes, Ansel Elgort. And then it was like, Ansel Elgort was like texting with Viners and you're like, oh God. And then you're just like watching different cast members of Baby Driver just like knock down one by one. It was, it was, there was a point where that post, so I have that poster. It's behind some posters now in a frame. Probably. I, I cycle through. I still think Baby Driver is a good movie, and that's a whole other thing. But I, I think it's a great movie. It's a great movie. And like, and yeah. like art, artist, a whole conversation. But like, whatever. I think Seven's a great movie too. Sure. You know? Yeah. I mean, Kevin Spacey's, oh boy, a good actor, a bad <laughs> person. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on. I want everyone oh, listening no, to there it. Is. Is. Yeah. Nick well, Scarterossi. Fun career. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Just really said that Kevin Spacey, to... I want to, I want to, because I want to quote you. You said, and this is a quote, Kevin Spacey never did anything he was accused <laughs> of. And that's <laughs> no, what you said, right? No, no. I want to make sure I'm getting no. this right. Kevin Spacey is trash. He is scum. He's a scum. He's a but, bad person. Give us the butt. He's a good actor. Oh, he is a good actor. So, okay. so like, we can't retroactively say that Baby Driver, you can say that Baby Driver, uh, um, that Lily James was underwritten. Uh, that, she was. That, that a lot of the dialogue could have used a punch up, sure. respectfully to Edgar Wright. You know uh, he's a listener. He's a listener, and I'm I idolize him. Uh, yep. But you can say a lot of things. Kevin Spacey's good in that movie. He's good in Outbreak. He's good in Seven. He's good. He's a good. I actor. remember your favorite movie of his. I believe was American Beauty because you <laughs> loved the storyline of him in that high school oh, girl. No. Yeah. Am I getting this wrong? I feel like yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I. I <laughs> It's, you know, he, I just think it's like we can't retroactively say that he's not, uh, you know, he's a, a terrible part. This is going to ruin my whole career. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, no, but I do think I do that. Listen, well, I, I like jokes aside, because I, I, I'm ribbing you. But jokes aside, I do think like there is that question of artist and art. I, I like I I refuse to listen to Kanye. I don't listen to Kanye. Anymore, sure. Because um, he's a raging anti-Semite. But like and, and, and just a really, do you listen to early Kanye? No, not at all. None. I Sometimes he comes on and I'm like, this is before. Because I have a theory about Kanye. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. A non-Jew is a theory about Kanye. Uh, no, no. Let I really do. I think that... I think That that he's right? I think that he's <laughs> totally right. Uh, no. Um, I saw this online once and uh-huh. I think it legitimately might be the case. Somebody theorized that Kanye has CTE. And yeah, I think I've heard that. that. I think that when he got in the car accident, when he wrapped through the wire, yeah. I think that... I'm not excusing his actions. Sure. I think that a lot of the things that he says and does one to his wife to the Jewish community to everybody is yeah. abhorrent I do think that you look at him pre-Donda mm. it's a different human and so I wonder how, was there some sort of cognitive decline um, I'm sure I'm sure there was I, I, this is I don't know how big his fans are I'm sure they're gonna like fucking ruin me listen uh, listen the fan bases that have come after our guests thankfully never after me because I don't say things like you do but like <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I think that the harshest fan bases, these are, these are, if I had to pick the three fan bases, I would not kick the hornet's nest on. It would be Taylor Swift. Yeah. I have no opinions on her. It would be Beyonce. Good. Yep. And it would be Nicki Minaj. Those are three hornet's nests. I would never, ever kick. I, I, Nicki Minaj is interesting. I didn't think that. Does she have like an intense fan base? She has a rabid fan base. On, Love her work. On the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love her. So you would say her work is good enough that you'd like put her as a peer with Kevin Spacey for you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you, like, <laughs> you like them both equally. Oh, um, God. Honestly, I should really make your newly friend game your favorite Kevin Spacey film. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I want you to know I'm not going to do that. But Thank like, you. there's a large part of me that would like to do that. Sure. Um, yeah. Actually, speaking of which, we should probably get to the newly friend game. Are you okay. ready for the first segment? Yeah. 
So the first segment is called the newly friend game. It's like the newlywed game, but with friends. Um, you are going to pick up your whiteboard over there. Oh, okay. Um, that little uh, paper towels for erasing. Um, we're gonna do two different can questions. I erase the past yeah, yeah, five <laughs> yeah. Can I can I erase everything I just said? Um, here's why we're gonna do different questions. Okay, okay. we're gonna do different questions because I have because I know you so well. There are too many directions I could go, and I want to cover two of them in the span of one. Okay. So here are the questions I'm going to do for you. I'm going to give – okay, I'm, I know which one I'm going to give you, and I know which one I'll take. My first question for you, what is your favorite TV show or movie that plays that, – that is Detroit-based or where Detroit plays a very big role? One, two, three, flip. You said 8 Mile and Gran Torino. <laughs> Oh, Barbarian. Barbarian was my second choice. My first one was Detroit Rock City. I've never City. seen Detroit Rock City. Are you kidding me right yeah. now? You would love Detroit. Do you know the, the, the premise of Detroit Rock City? No. Detroit Rock City is about four high school guys that are obsessed with the band Kiss, and they are doing everything in their power to get to the concert that night of Kiss, and everything that can go wrong does go wrong as they journey to get to this concert. It I love is that. it is a I love one night only movies like everything in the same night kind of situations like you're dazed and confused and what have you. Yeah. Oh my god, I love dazed and confused. Great movie. Detroit Rock City is like I'll watch that. It is so good and it is so ridiculous and stupid and it has a, one of my favorite lines in it which is a lot of people are into disco at this point and these four guys are still into Kiss. And one of them was like, dude, disco blows dogs for quarters. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, that kind of dialogue you just don't get anymore. You don't get that. Disco um, is life, though. Uh, wow. Well, okay. okay, we didn't get this first one. Barbarian is tough because Barbarian, I think, was actually filmed in, like, Bulgaria. But it takes place in Detroit. It does. It does. But I think that I, I while I did like the movie Barbarian, I, I didn't like how it depicted Detroit. So I think I, I, think I got a little, like, because I remember being like, like, I was a little salty about the street. I will say this. I don't disagree with you, but I do think the point that Barbarian makes about the ideas of trying to, like, Airbnb gentrify bad neighborhoods is, sure. like, a very good one. Also, it doesn't really look very Detroity. that street. Mm. Like, like it felt— I don't think it was the areas of Detroit you were spending a lot of time well, in. Well, no, but, I, but I've—you but I, but I, know, I've been in the city. There yeah. are—and I've been in bad parts of Detroit. Like, that— I think sometimes what that movie and maybe why I had a mental block about that mm. is because he just made that street look shitty and then said Detroit. And I think that there's a specific, there is a specific type of like, uh, um, ruin in parts of the city mm. th that you kind of have to like take into account contextually. And I think just making something shitty and then saying Detroit, I was like, okay. too easy. Well, yeah. Also, like, there's just oh God, there's like, oh, it follows is a really good. Oh, is that fuck Detroit? Me. That's the movie I would have written. It follows is Detroit. Yeah, I did not and know that. It follows is well, the director David Robert Mitchell is from Michigan, and it's in Detroit and like Metro Detroit, and it, and that is a horror movie that perfectly captures Metro Detroit. When I think about that, that director, I just think about what a potential hit that was such a big miss under the silver lake was yeah um he made a movie called the uh the myth of the american sleepover which is a really cute indie and when i was a senior in college my friends and i filmed a feature and we've never released it and because it's cheeks but uh what is it's cheeks cheeks mean? ass oh it's ass. Cheeks. It's yeah. ass i just like to say cheeks is that like a uh, thing do people say that oh no, they Jill should says people say i it. love saying cheeks okay my apologies um, Maybe but I'm we old. filmed this movie and uh and, and there was another indie filming called The American Sleepover. And I remember my, my friends and I were always like, oh, there's another indie in Michigan filming. That one's going to, that one will never do it. That one will be cheeks. Yeah. Yeah. We were like, we're the, we're the one, you know, the class in these waters. And then that was David Robert Mitchell who made It Follows, which is, I think, maybe one of the greatest horror films in the past 20 years. I love that movie. Oh, we do not. I like that movie. Oh, I love it. It's the Follows. greatest. No. I love It Follows. Uh, Micah Monroe, Scream Queen. Uh, she, I thought, was better in Watcher. I have not seen Watcher. Watcher was great, but I would not put that in I'm, my... I'm putting... I'm. I'm you're crossing out. Well, we're about to erase and go to the next I question. Care. Okay. I'm writing It Follows. Okay. You're, and you're entitled to do so. Can you, you mind passing the paper towel? I'm going to erase of my course. answer. Um, and then for my question, okay, and you're going to be like, why was this not mine? Because there are simply not enough movies for this to be a question that we could do twice. 
The question for me that you are to guess what I'm going to say okay. is what is my favorite Edgar Wright film? Ooh. One, two, three, flip. The world's end. <laughs> I said Scott Pilgrim and Dylan said fucking uh, Hot Fuzz, which is amazing. Hot Fuzz is my favorite movie of all time. Hot Fuzz. You wrote The World's End. Yeah. Well, no, this is your, my guess. Oh, you. you were guessing for me. Yeah. Hot Fuzz is great, especially because of what they did with Bad Boys and like how they did all Rules. those homages and everything. Wonderful. Scott Pilgrim to me was one of the first times I saw someone do something with a movie yeah. where they were like, like that style of editing with the video gaming and all that kind of stuff. I know parts of Scott Pilgrim do not hold up now. However, that style is what really like got me and the way the edits worked with, like with the video game things and you would do those sweeping like pan edits into the next yeah. scene. Like I just loved that stuff. That movie, the first time I saw Scott Pilgrim yeah. was in a theater and I was so outrageously high oh. that in that I was I was oh God, I forget when that movie came out. I was so young. But like I remember that that scene when they are playing in the intro mm. they're the rock band yeah and the camera pulls back and it, the room just gets longer and longer and i was just like i yeah. literally my brain like split into two it was insane here's what here's i'll what's never gonna, forget that moment here's what's going to offend you and uh, the the gentleman behind the camera um my favorite cornetto trilogy movie was also not hot fuzz it was Shaun of the dead Shaun of the dead rules absolutely love it i do love hot Shaun fuzz of the dead too. changed my life it's like one of the main reasons I want to make movies and like act and stuff like that. It's Shaun of the Dead. Oh, there's like a I remember I remember being in the movie theater yeah. when I was like I think 13, mm. 14 mm. and the trailer for Shaun of the Dead came on. I forget what movie my friends and I were seeing and I just it was like a chemical change. Like it was like the when he lights the bar on fire and the zombie movie and also like Simon Pegg who is like my absolute hero. Yeah, he's yeah. also like a ginge. Shaun of the Dead has a deep, deep, deep impact on, on me creatively, on me aesthetically, everything. Yeah. One of the things I want to talk to you about mm -hmm. is um, identity and comedy. I'd like to okay. talk to you about that, and I'll tell you why. I, for the longest time, was like, I cannot curse because now my identity is a clean comic. Yeah. Now, let me just kind of cut myself off right there and say, I understand how arrogant that sounds where I'm like, well, I have an identity in comedy, which is like so ridiculous. Uh -huh. I don't think anyone goes, oh, Josh Lenz, that clean comic. Wait, he, he curse. Am I tying myself to an identity because that is the identity I need to hold on to? Or am I tying myself to the identity because of some like absolutely misplaced idea that other people tie me to this identity? We had a conversation at dinner the other night and we were talking about your journey in becoming a non-binary comic. Mm -hmm. Was there, and this is such a loaded question because comedy is only a very small part of who you are, mm -hmm. but was there any part of you once you had came out, once you had come out as non-binary, was there any part of you that was kind of like, do I need to rethink how I approach comedy now? Because is this like now, has my identity as a comedian shifted? Or do I feel any responsibility to talk about it as a comedian? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Three parts. For Sorry, that was such a loaded question. No, it's not. It's totally fine to ask too. Uh, and 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 like you know, I mean, some people might not want that question. I totally fine. I just want to address the thing you said at the top. I think that I think that you should absolutely. It's totally. I don't think that there's any ego. Well, I think that any approach to comedy. I think that if you get on a stage and you think that you are funny, there is a certain degree of ego that you have to accept. And I think that people mm. who deny that are ridiculous. And I think that it doesn't make any sense. I think that just because an algorithm has given some of us a bigger chance and made some of us elevated, whether we're ready or not, does not mean that we are suddenly able to say that we have a voice or thinking that having a voice is an ego. I think that as a comic, if you want to get better, regardless of what the numbers are, you have to have a voice and you have to know what that voice is. And I don't think there's ego associated with having a voice. So if you want to say that you're a clean comic mm. and you want to say that you have a voice, you absolutely sound like Jeffrey Rush and uh, King Speed. You have a voice. But I think that you absolutely should have a voice. And, 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 and there's no ego in thinking that you have a voice. I think that's just your development as a comedian. Mm. Uh, and I think that there's you just shouldn't feel shame in that. And I think that there's this degree of like you know, I, I don't know. I've become un, much more unabashed about, we, we talked about this earlier, like ambition and, and, you know, drive and all of these things. And I think that if you, you know, move, I, I moved 3000 miles away from my family yeah. to pursue this. If I don't have an ego and think that I am good enough to get on stage with anybody, 
then I am wasting my time and I am wasting time that I could be with my family. I'm wasting time that I could own a home in Michigan. So I refuse to do that. I just think that like you have to have a voice and like, and you have to hone it and you have to absolutely own why you want to do this. There are some people that just want to get on a stage and make people laugh and not have any whatever. And that's fine. Sure. But I do not think having ambition, especially in this industry Mm. is bad. I just don't. To answer your other question, uh, yeah, my comedy has always been about myself. And I think that, like, you can allow people to – it's it's easy to allow people to laugh at you. Like, Kevin Hart's whole special, Laugh at My Pain, right? I always think about that. Like, there's there's a degree of just turning the lens on yourself and then commenting on other things throughout that that I think puts an audience at ease, in my opinion, in my mm-hmm. experience, uh, and how I've always approached it. Um, and, and yeah, there's like a, and and if I say it's okay to laugh at me, I'm going to tell you a story where I'm the butt of the joke. Mm. I'm not punching down or up really. And if I ever punch, I'm always going to punch up, but it's through, I'm the joke. Yeah. And then I'll take that thing. Here's my question. I always thought when people introduce their pronouns that it was, and I don't remember the, the correct grammatical terms for it, but it was like, like he, him, they, them she her Mm -hmm. like it was the again everyone who's a grammar nut is yelling through their through their speakers right now but it was the thing where it was like the subject one versus the object so like the object being like a him her them subject being she he they so i always thought it was subject then object he him they them yeah you said to me when we first talked about it that you go by he they and i was like oh this is confusing because the second one is also uh, 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 the, 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 the pronoun. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, it is a he, her, they yeah. versus him, her, or she, him. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I didn't know. So is, is he saying that I can use when I refer to or to you yeah. in, in, in talking to someone else, I can call you he, they, and use him and them. Yeah, yeah. That is what that means. I just don't like writing he, him, his, they, them, theirs. I think it's just too long. So I just write I he, they. I see. So it's like a catch-all. He, they also Yeah, because if I say like, hi, I'm Nick, he, him, his, they, them, theirs, I'm also a pescatarian. It's like a lot. <laughs> I love the pescatarian got you know, some air time yeah, there. You know, yeah, it's like, and I have OCD. Like, it's a lot of labels. Oh, my God. If you went to CrossFit and you were yeah. atheist, and oh, so my God, is, this would be the greatest moment of your life. It's truly why I don't tell people that I'm a pescatarian, because I can, like, feel the eye roll. Because uh-huh. if, they, if they're like, oh, these are my pronouns, and also, <laughs> so, like, which, that's a whole other question, and you know, the addiction to shame, but yeah, yeah, love it. Uh, yeah. So, so, so really when someone says he, they, they're saying like, it is all, everything related in, to those. In my two. case. Yes. In your case. Yes. I don't know. I can't. Uh, yes. I'm not everybody. trying to blanket yeah, it. Yeah. Cause there's um, a, there's it. There's all, I've there's, seen. Yes. I've seen. Uh, yeah. I've seen a that. lot. And yeah, I just think that it's a, it's an evolving conversation and it's one that I do get to have on stage, which is a kind of fun little privilege. Yeah. It was funny uh, the other day. I, I, uh, this was a couple of months ago, but like I was having a conversation with, a group of guys that I don't know super well, but like friends of friends. And um, it had to be more than a few months ago because it was like, it, I, I don't remember what celebrity it was. It wasn't Harry Styles. It was after that. But like there was some some male celebrity that was like wearing a dress at, at some kind of event. Yeah. And one of them was like, yeah, uh, I don't know how much it would take to get me to wear a dress. And I was like, get you to? I would love that. Oh, it, I, let me tell you, rips. Oh, yeah. No, I no. I love wearing a dress. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. <laughs> and I, so I said that. And Jess, Jess looks at them and goes, if he weren't feeling a certain way about his body right now, because, you know, I was not in great shape at the time. I'm, sure. I'm still, you know, working on it, wedding weight. I think you look great. She, thank you. She's like, he'd, he'd be wearing a dress to this event today. And yeah. I was like, like, the, so it's interesting because I think that there are groups of people that associate certain things with certain groups of people, whereas there are other ones of us. And maybe this is like I chalk this up to being, you know, raised in New York around a bunch of liberals and, you know, and all that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff where I'm just like, I'm, I'm fucking wear a dress tomorrow. My biggest fear would be that, like, I might get a little cold. And also, like, I think a lot about whether or not the shoes I was wearing made sense because I like wearing sneakers and, like, is it going to look shitty? Like, I would think about that. Yeah. But the idea of wearing a dress? <sighs> I wore seems, sneakers. Seems great. Yeah, but I would want it to kind of match, or maybe I'd go neutral with the sneakers. I don't know. I would well, have I to think, think more about it. I wore all I wore all black, and then I wore very colorful. That's sneakers. very New York, going all black with yeah. yeah. But mm-hmm. then a pop on the bottom. Yeah, I always tell people because I'm a big sneaker guy. I think you you may or may not remember. Both of us. Um, yes, I always tell people I'm like, listen, you can flex on top, 
or you can flex on bottom. Yeah, you can't flex. You all don't over. go both. I if agree. you're wearing super colorful sneakers, don't wear a super colorful shirt. Yeah, you gotta you gotta go neutrals in one area I and agree. go fun in the other. I'm uh, yeah. So if I were wearing like really crazy sneakers, for example, I would not wear a dress that had a lot of different color in it because to me that's just ripe for clash. I would probably wear a neutral, but I also like neutrals in general. I mean, I'm kind of like this is what I'm, I'm wearing like gray jeans and a white shirt. Yeah, like I mean, this is yeah. Exactly. I'm wearing what, all blue right now. And, shades of. Uh, yeah, shades of. I know, I know. I thought it would match better. No, I like but, it. But And then bright yellow sneakers. I did like the sneakers. You got a pop. I, I, I clocked them when, they, when you came in. I knew you would. Um, oh God, I hate to do this because I'm really loving this conversation, but I feel like we should probably get to lightning round. Are you okay. ready? Oh, yes. Lightning round. Yes. Okay. You don't have to get the board. No, oh, no. You oh, sit. Oh. You relax. You glance at the board. <laughs> So this is the lightning round. This is five fast questions. They do not at all have to be fast answers. These are just the last five questions we end every episode with. Okay. Question one, what is a favorite ritual of yours? So for example, like I love brewing tea in the morning. What would be one that, that you oh, enjoy? A favorite ritual? Okay. I don't do this too much anymore, but I, mm. uh, but I did this all the time. When I was in uh, theater school, whenever I was in a show, um, before I went on stage, I would always walk down a hall and I would pretend to high five all my favorite actors, like like athletes going out of a tunnel. That's a great one. Yeah. Um, any surprising actor or actress that would have been in that line? Will that... Smith. <laughs> Here's Just cancel me. You no, know. No. 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 <laughs> Here's what I'm going to say. So I'll give you a similar. A great hot, actor. I'll give you a similarly hot take here. I think what he did was terrible, and I don't know that we should be judging anybody by their worst moment. Yeah, I don't think that. I think that he made a, a, a truly insane choice uh, in the yeah. heat of the moment. Yeah. And but there's also a lot of stuff about like people talked about how like Chris Rock came for his wife a lot, and like I don't know, I don't know. I you're right. I I, I don't think that I don't think that we should end Will Smith's career. Great actor. Yeah. Six Degrees of Separation. You ever seen that movie? Wasn't it unbelievable? S- wasn't it Seven Pounds? No, no, that's another movie. It's like Matt Damon in um, uh, Ripley. Uh, oh, Talented Mr. Ripley. It's like that level of like mm. different actor. Like it's it's like how we, I just watched that movie for the first time, which is nuts. But Matt Damon is such a different actor than he normally is in that. Yeah. Will Smith in Six Degrees of Separation, similar like chameleon. It's very interesting. Question two. Yes. Um. What is a running bit you have with a friend or partner that makes you laugh? One, uh, when people talk about grandparents, mm. you know, there's always like, how many grandparents do you have alive, right? There's always that conversation. And like, none of my grandparents yeah, are alive. none, zero. But I used to do this bit where people would ask that and I'd say like, yeah, all four of them. And I'd be like, oh, it's crazy that they were all on that oil tanker that morning. <laughs> That's good. It just went up in flames so fast. Yeah. We lost all of them in the blink of an eye. That was a that was a good bit for like a long time. I Anytime when, when I would like, if it came up and I'd be like, they'd be like, oh, like, what about your dad? Like, oh, my dad died. Like, I'm so sorry. And I'd be like, it was you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't there, a, what's that Dimitri Barton bit? It's like the um, saying I'm sorry is very different than saying I apologize at a funeral. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Dimitri Martin. I've not heard that. That's very funny. So funny. Question three. Yes. What is a very controversial opinion that you have? <laughs> we talked about this before the podcast because I was like, I don't know what I'm going to say. I am fine with the full body scan things in the airport. What I, do you mean by fine with it? What does like, that mean? I think it's fine. I don't care that they, that everyone's always like, they can see your junk. I don't mind. Mm. I don't mind. I'm not saying that this is for everybody and I'm not okay with like the racial pl- profiling that happens at the TS- TSA or any of that. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying, I think that everybody should go through the tube. And okay. if it became more invasive, <laughs> I think I'd be fine. You think what? I'm really scared of flying. I'm really scared of flying. And I just think, I think everybody, regardless of yep. who you are, you go through the tube. Go through the tube. And you got to get scanned. And I think it'd do wonders, honestly, for their marketing. I think that they should become a very cool, like, X-Files. I think that they should all wear trench coats. And sunglasses. And sunglasses. It's the Matrix. And I think they should all be, like, men in black. Yeah. I think it should just be, like, very, and I, I don't think they should speak. Everyone's think, name is Agent Smith. Yeah, I think they should be called agents, and I think that there should yep. be a tube. I don't think that people should be separated. Into you don't want the, the metal detector. Yeah, because sometimes the tube. just like I'm like, what is that about? Why am I going through the tube today, and why am I going through the metal detector? I've been through both. I don't know what the pre things are. I don't think that they should feel people up because I think that that's kind of fucked up. But I do think that we should mm. all go through the tube. I think it should be cold, and I think that they should rebrand. Yeah, and I, I think they should be called something like the guardrail. <laughs> I think that that would be very cool for them to do. I recently got yelled at. I had to go through the tube, and um, they were like, "We said take everything out of your pockets." I'm like, "I think I thought I thought, I thought I did." Yeah. 
I had an Altoid in my pocket, a loose Altoid. Am I proud of that? No, but I had a loose Altoid in my pocket. And they're like, what's this? I'm like, a curiously strong breath mint. <laughs> uh, okay, question four. Yes. Have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? And if so, is there one particular moment that really sticks with you? I mean, the non-binary thing is like the whole conversation about that is like, I, I think like, you know, am I welcome in a community and stuff like that? I think that there's a degree of imposter syndrome on that. I also think... Um, is that going to be forever? No, I don't think so. I mean, it, it lessens. It, it's just like it's a journey. I mean, like, which is such a cliche way to refer to it, but it like um, imposter syndrome. I think anytime I'm on like a lineup, like a huge lineup mm -hmm. where I'm like the least famous comic by like a lot. I j it just happened to me about three weeks ago. Yeah. And I, I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, she must have ran out of people. And you have to like, yeah, you have to like kind of like go along with the conversation. I, ugh, I remember like, I've had so many comics like be in these rooms and they're like, they're just like, yeah, like Tina Fey, she runs crazy hours in her writer's rooms. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just sitting in the room like, mm hmm. I had one comic one time and he would look at me and he was like, I love doing movies instead of TV because movies, you just have much more time on your hands. And I was like, tight. You know, what's really interesting is that like, I do hear this sometimes where people are like, you're killing it. And I'm not. Oh, no. So so I would. So I, that is, I do view you in that way. Yeah. Yeah. And I've had. A couple I don't think anyone views me in that way, which is great. They shouldn't. I but disagree. I Again, disagree. looking at this house. But I think that this house is predominantly built on the corporate job I've had while I've had comedy. But that's impressive. I don't find that to be. If you're successful at something that you don't want to do, what does that really mean? Michael Jordan at one point was like, he was the greatest basketball player that ever lived. And he was still like, I want to play basketball baseball yeah. because this doesn't mean anything to me but my father always wanted me to play baseball and if I'd be good at this this is what matters just because I I was good in corporate America doesn't mean that I've accomplished anything no but it's something that like I just think you sell yourself short I think you're very talented I'm very good at being down about myself yes yeah I think we all are I yeah mean, you are too yeah of course yeah that's what uh, we're good at uh, Olympic level I think that we're all kind of floundering I think that people there are you know and and, and I I've tr recently I had this year, I, I branded this year as like the year of scoring goals. Mm. And I was like, start of this year, I was like, we are doing nothing but scoring goals. Like I put myself in I position. I haven't done that yet, but I'm excited to score a goal. Well, yeah, it, neither have I. And, mm. and I put my, I was like, I put myself in position for years to score goals. I'm going to score a fucking goal. Yeah. And then I had failure after failure. This has been the year of like inches away from what I've dreamed of. Yeah. Over and over again. And I got so down on myself and so depressed. And just recently, it reached to such a point that I finally, I think I finally have glazed over in the way that I was supposed to. And just like, yeah, okay. Well, I told, to I told Hannah, I was like, I'm done holding funerals for my failures. It's a wonderful phrase. Did you come and up with I, that? Yeah, I think. Excellent. But I, I, I was like, this that is... That should be the name of your next special, Funerals for My Funerals Failures. Funerals for My Failures, yeah. Uh, that should also um, be an emo band. But but it does. Um, but yeah, I think that that's, like, that, that's been a big thing for, for me is like... So just to say that anybody that's listening to this or thinking that I am killing it, I am not. Okay, so uh, the big announcement, if everyone is listening, I'm Nick not doing Rossi well. is not doing great. <laughs> And honestly, that's actually what this intervention is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but I, you know, that's been that's been the big thing for me. It's like I'm like I got I got keep moving tattooed on me, and like I just was like, where are you just pointed oh, yeah. in a very nondescript oh, area? I'm okay, yeah, right here. Yeah, you're like right in my crotch. Yeah, my crotch. Okay, yeah. Um, but 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 I like it, it's just sort of like a thing. It's just like I have I I know that I'm not moving home. I know that I'm not giving up. Uh, but regardless of like what happens career wise, I'm just gonna keep pushing and yeah so I, that's that's kind of like i'm done destroying myself because this whole year after i lost out on some pretty major opportunities i was like bereft for like a week or two and i was yeah. like i can't do that to myself like my psyche so i want to get tattooed on my body don't fear disappointment but i want to put mm. it right in right above my pubic area um mm. and just yeah <laughs> final question for yeah. you uh and I know you're maybe not a diehard tea drinker, so I will ask you the variant of this. I've worked at Tivana. What is your favorite tea or what is your favorite comfort? Um, my favorite comfort mm -hmm. is ramen. Oh, like packet day. ramen or like real ramen? Real ramen. I love packet ramen too. I, I loved it care. too, but then I moved to Los Angeles. Yeah. Sure. In the Midwest, I was like, packet ramen for sure. And then I was like, they Thinking make this in bowls? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Wait a um, minute. This comes with fresh noodles? Yeah, like this is like an art form. Yeah. Um, uh, so ramen on a rainy day um is the most comfort i think you can possibly feel um and my favorite tea 
is my mom my mom lives in dearborn michigan and so she goes to like a lot and it's dearborn has a really high concentration of middle easterners Love and it. at michigan itself i think has the highest concentration of middle easterners outside of the middle east so there's like a lot of like markets and she loves going to like all of these places and getting these foods and, yeah. and like so she'll send me these teas and there's like a raspberry tea that i really really love or a pomegranate tea um that that is like so good and like i cannot read the labels she just sure. sends me these boxes i like that one um and then at the end of the night i love a chamomile because it puts mm. me it is like melatonin yeah it's great it's it is ambient in liquid form i am out i have a chamomile dunzo what's the brand i think it's sleepy bear oh it's okay. like that little bear yeah a sleepy time tea everyone is always like you must hate it as a tea if it's not i'm like why would i hate that yeah I it's so that. good Everyone's like, oh, do you hate me that I drink, like, and yeah, I'll name, like, a random brand. I'm like, no. No. They're like, know. oh, do you hate Mighty Leaf? I'm like, no. You know what? I like it's, Mighty Leaf. It's, we are so geared right now to defend everything that we believe in. Yeah. And it's like, it's fine. You can enjoy, enjoy your Reese's Cup. I don't have We're enough energy. We're all going to die. Like, yeah, yeah. who cares? Like, if, you, if you're not actively harming somebody, have your fucking store brought oh i thought you were gonna say if you're not actually harming somebody are you even living are you even alive yeah if you've not cut somebody's palm and chanted an incantation into their eyes are you alive that is why i think it's totally fine given that that's your belief system i think that's why it's totally fine that you like kevin spacey because i feel like that's (laughs) 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 you know it it aligns kevin spacey is not store-bought milk kevin spacey is 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 moldy awful milk that that, with an intent to harm which is why it's weird that you drink it i think um (laughs) wakes me up (laughs) Uh, that's the pod, man. How do you feel? Great. I mean, great. <laughs> <laughs> Curious how my Kevin Spacey comments will be interpreted. I um, aren't you happy large. this was a podcast and not an intervention? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, thank you for coming. You're welcome. Thanks for having anytime. me. Of course. That was Nick Scartarossi. You can find him on Instagram at Nick Scartarossi and on TikTok at Nick Scartarossi Real. This episode was produced by Dylan Rosenthal. It was edited by Martin Alvarez. Our theme song and additional music are by Oliver Hymack. Our cover art was done by Neil Fraser with photography by Matt Mazisco. Social media by Dia Villegas. Please write a review and rate our podcast on Apple Podcasts and wherever else you can. You can send any questions, comments, newly friend game suggestions, or tea suggestions to steepcombos at gmail.com or tweet us at steepcombos. I'm Josh Lanzette, and you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook at Josh Lanzette. We'll be back next week. So until then, happy steeping. I'm curious about that. I learned that recently because I was a dark roast buyer. We've all been talking about it. Me and Jude have been talking about that for days. About my mistakes with comedy yeah. or coffee? Well, uh, wow. What a Whoa. Freudian slip there. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Well, we can just wrap the pot up right yeah, now. Yeah, we fine. got it out of him.